Thompson wins it in overtime. Brady can jump, breakaway shoots, scores! Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon and I am your host. Last night, Ellie Freeman put out a report that frankly blew up hockey Twitter and Sense Twitter alike. He put out a report stating that the Ottawa Senators are doing their due diligence and exploring trade options with Alex DeBrincat. Now look, everyone take a deep breath. Okay, I saw a lot of mock trades and trade speculation and trade rumors. All the armchair GMs came out last night, believe me, on Twitter. A lot of obnoxious trade offers, I'll be honest with you, I saw on Twitter. But look, I saw a lot of Sens fans seeing this news and just assuming that Alex Brinkat is gone. Just like that. But look, nothing, and I mean nothing out there, has indicated that Alex Brinkat wants out of Ottawa. So everyone needs to take a deep breath, okay? That's just the beginning of this. Take a deep breath. There's no indication that Alex Brinkat wants out of Ottawa. All we know right now is that he wants to wait and see who the next owners of the Ottawa Senators are going to be. Now look, he's 25 years old. The next contract he signs, especially with Ottawa, is going to be a long-term contract. Likely eight years. That's according to Bruce Garriock. He reported yesterday that the Ottawa Senators are looking at an eight-year deal with Alex Debrinkat. That's two years away from a decade, okay? That is the best years of his hockey career. It makes sense that Alex Debrinkat wants to see what the situation is going to be long-term in Ottawa. I fully get that. There's no issue in my books on Alex Debrinkat wanting to see and doing what is best for him and his family. I totally get that. But just like he has to do what's best for his family, the Ottawa Senators and Pierre Dorian have to do what's best for the organization. They can't leave this to the last minute and lose value on a very, very good player like they did with Mark Stone and Mike Hoffman and countless others over the last few years. So Pierre Dorian is absolutely doing the right thing by exploring options, testing the market, and doing his due diligence so he has all the bases covered if and or when Alex DeBrincat gets back to him in the next couple of weeks. Now look, you're probably wondering, Brandon, Alex DeBrincat's an RFA. We can obviously disqualify him, sign him for one more year, and kick this down the curb and just worry about it later. Well, yeah, I guess you're technically right, but guess what? Like I just mentioned, we did that with Mark Stone. It did not turn out so well. We got pennies on the dollar of what we could have got for, frankly, one of the best wingers in the National Hockey League, okay? So Ottawa, and especially Pierre Dorian, are not interested, I'm sure, in doing that again. So with that in mind, yeah, look, Ottawa could qualify him, kick it down the road, and then potentially sign him long-term. That's obviously, you know, a scenario, but I just don't see that happening. Why would Ottawa sign him for one more year and then have him lose all his value and then trade him for pennies on the dollar if he ultimately decides not to sign in Ottawa? So with that in mind, yeah, sure, technically Ottawa could qualify him and they have no reason to even be looking at trade offers right now. They have another year technically. But once again, you don't want to leave this to the last minute. We've seen what happens when you do that. Ottawa wants to get full value for a guy like Alex Debrinkat. And I totally understand that. Once again, you don't want to be left stranded. You'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, and I totally understand Pierre Dorian doing his due diligence and checking the market. And more importantly, as we'll talk about later, uh, you know, for Alex Debrinkat, you're not trading him for draft picks. You're trading him for an immediate NHL player. So if Ottawa is going to trade him, they should get an idea of what they can get on the market and how they can replace Alex Debrinkat via that trade. It makes total sense, frankly. Now, speaking of his qualifying offer, here's a scenario right now Alex Debrinkat faces in terms of arbitration and qualification and everything since he's an RFA. Debrinkat, like I just said, is an RFA, which means next year after this one-year contract will be a UFA if he does not sign long-term with Ottawa. Now, a qualifying offer at the max value would be $9 million. That's a lot of money, but Pierre Dorian on the Locked On show the other day mentioned the possibility of bringing down the cap hit via arbitration by 15%. This would drop him to $7.8 million dollars on a one-year deal, which of course is much better than $9 million. With $1.2 million in savings, you can allocate that to Brandstrom, to Pinto, or even a free agent signing for the bottom six. So obviously you want to avoid arbitration with a player like Alex Debrinkat. Arbitration is usually a nasty, you know, situation. You just want to avoid it. Um, but for Ottawa, they kind of have no choice. They obviously don't want to sign him for $9 million again. They frankly can't afford it, as we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, so they're kind of stuck here where they got to recoup top value for the guy, which is why they're looking at trade options, but they as well, of course, want to sign him long term, but at a rate lower than $9 million. So let's assume for a second that everything works out and Alex Debrinkat elects to stay in Ottawa. What could a potential contract look like? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, look, now that we all understand why Pierre Dorian has to make a decision here within the next month in terms of trading or signing 
Alex Debrinkat. Let's take a look at a potential deal, and here are some things to consider. Firstly, last year, Alex Debrinkat scored less than 30 goals. He only scored 27 and had 66 points total. A big-time drop-off from his time in Chicago. But do keep in mind, for significant portions of the season, Ottawa did not have a top six that was healthy. That led to a lot of line shuffling, which means that Alex Debrinkat, one, was put into a new system, two, was asked to play more physical, and three, did not have consistent line mates. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like the ideal conditions for a player to succeed. I'm sorry, especially in a new system. Players often already struggle as is with their new team in their first year, let alone with all those other mitigating factors. So it's easy to see why Alex Debrinkat did not have quote unquote the best year, but 66 points, almost 30 goals, and a down year. Keep in mind, this guy hit the post five, ten times at least this year. He's basically a 30 goal scorer, almost a 40 goal scorer, and that was without Josh Norris in the top six. So it's easy to see Alex Debrinkat bouncing back and in a big way next year. And that brings me to my next point, because look, Ottawa doesn't really have any options to replace this production, specifically in the wing, in the pipeline. Claude Giroux is not getting any younger. Losing Alex Debrinkat would have catastrophic effects for the Ottawa Senators for years to come. Now look, I'm a big fan of Ridley Gregg. I'm a big fan of Shane Pinto. I'm a big fan of Zach Osipchuk and Tyler Boucher and Yarventi and Sokolov and Crookshank. They're not Alex Debrinkat. I'm sorry. They're just not. They're not a 40-goal scorer. They don't have one of the best shots in the league. And keep in mind, Alex Debrink had actually had more assists than goals. The guy can distribute the puck as well. You're losing a big-time playmaker with a big-time threat on the shot as well. You just can't replace that. So with all of that in mind, yeah, he had a down year. But in a down year, he was still one of Ottawa's best offensive weapons, which kind of puts everything in perspective of how good of a player Alex Debrinkat is. Now look, to many of you guys watching this right now, it looks like a slam dunk. Oh yeah, we should absolutely sign Alex Debrinkat. It should be a no-brainer. But here's where it gets iffy, and this is why it's not a no-brainer. Ottawa currently has just under $18 million in cap space right now, with other holes they have to fill throughout the lineup that need to be addressed, such as with the bottom six and goaltending. Also, Eric Brandstrom and Shane Pinto need contract extensions this year, and Jake Sanderson is going to be waiting for a contract extension next year. So you have a lot of capital implications to think about for this year, next year, and beyond before signing a guy like Alex Debrinkat. So could the Ottawa Sanders afford him? Well, that's a great question. Let's move on to the next segment of this video where you take a look at some comparable contracts around the National Hockey League. Now, for this portion of the video, I use Cat Friendly as a great resource. By the way, cannot recommend Cat Friendly enough, especially for stuff like this when you're taking a look at RFAs and, you know, buyouts and stuff like that. Cat Friendly, frankly, is the best resource out there. Cannot recommend them enough. But I use Cat Friendly to take a look at some other comparable contract extensions in the past in the National Hockey League that other notable RFAs, similar to Alex Debrink, had an age and production. And his current situation, being on a one-year qualifying situation as an RFA, have signed in the past when facing arbitration. Now, as you can see on your screen right now, based off of this chart, $8.5 million might be on the low end for a guy like Alex Debrinkat. And it's pretty clear to me, and probably many of you guys watching this right now, you will not be signing Alex Debrinkat long-term for under $8 million per year. And I mean, look, Cole Caulfield the other day got $7.8 million. He's 22 years old. Debrinkat's a little bit older, has 40 goal seasons under his belt. He's not signing for under $8 million without a doubt. Based off that chart, I would expect Alex Debrinkat expects somewhere between $8.5 to $9 million per season on his next long-term contract. If the Sens are okay with that, then that means Matthew Joseph making $4 million, Eric Brandstrom likely making about $3 million next year, become expendable trade pieces to clear cap space. Because look, if you're going to sign Alex Debrinkat to a contract at such a high AAV, would be the highest on the Ottawa Sanders, by the way, that would mean you would have roughly $9 million to work with to sign Shane Pinto and Jake Sanderson to contract extensions the next couple of years. Plus... That's not even looking at the rest of your roster and filling out the other holes, you know, through the next few years in the bottom six and at goaltending and maybe even the bottom pairing on defense. Now, of course, that's not taking into account the potential cap growth, but regardless, that's going to be what? Another few million dollars that frees up two, three million dollars. Okay, that's great. That doesn't really move the needle too much, though, when you're signing a guy like Alex Debrinkat for potentially $8.59 million. You have to look at the long-term thing here, too. 
So my final thoughts are very simple. If Alex DeBrincat is willing to sign between $7.5 to $8.5 million per year, I'd definitely be interested. You can move a Matthew Joseph, for example, and you can make it work without a doubt. His point production is sure to pick up, and Ottawa, frankly, doesn't have many internal options, if not any, sorry, to clarify, they don't have any internal options to replace Alex DeBrincat. But anything higher, such as past $8.5 million, and that's already a bit high for me as is, would lead me to prefer a trade for an immediate NHL impact player at a more cost-effective rate. And by the way, we will be doing a video on that very, very soon, especially when we get more clarity on whether or not Alex DeBrincat will be traded or not. Be on the lookout for that. But yeah, look, it's very simple. If you can sign him for somewhere between $7.5 to $8.5 million, keep him around. Anything past, you know, and by the way, 8.5 is still quite a bit in my opinion, but anything past 8.5, you just have to find a much more cost-effective player through free agency or, of course, through the trade with Alex Debrinkat. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As usual, I look forward to responding and debating back and forth. Love the engagement in the comment section. So thank you all for your support. I'll see you all in the next one. Go, Sens, go.